Hi guys, Mike here with Show Enough is the Master. That's right. Or Show Enough, or Show. <laughs> anyway, he came down from the Twin Cities today <coughs> and uh, just decided to spend a, a day here uh, meeting me uh, about, I don't know, quarter to ten or so, but uh, we started out uh, uh, about an hour ago and uh, been working on some skills. He is, I think, processing for the first time some, uh, what, do you, what, what do you got there, Shel? Uh, woods nettle cordage, uh, and it is the first time I've done nettle cordage, and it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Got some decent length there, and uh, good tinsel strength, and uh, that's a pretty, pretty decent job when you need, need to put something together. I probably could have used some on this tripod, couldn't I? <laughs> instead of a piece of a paracord. Anyway, we're getting out and doing some skills practice. And uh, uh, like I said, he's doing the natural cordage. And uh, I'm showing him my my area here. And uh, We did a little bit of map. Uh, yeah. Orienteering too in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Did some orienteering with just some compass work. And uh, so you guys got a lot to look forward to if you'll ever come and visit us. Uh, we can get a lot done in a day. But anyway, we just thought we'd uh, start with introductions. You want to give a plug for what you got going up there in the city? Yeah, well, um, we meet uh, every other week, weekend, on Sunday at about uh, 10 a.m. And we do it at the um, the Highland Lake Park Reserve, which is in Edina. So yeah. it's a little south. Yeah. And uh, it's a central location, and we kind of do the same thing. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, couple hours, we'll have lunch, people can meet up at lunchtime if they want a shorter day, do yep. maybe three or six hours. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And also if anybody wants to come down here from the cities, I'll probably be coming here for this um, every other week too, yeah. starting this today. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yep. So if you can leave Minneapolis at 8 a.m., uh, I can give you a ride. So there you have it guys, a uh, good way to plug into getting some uh, bush class lessons out of the way. and. Get some skills practice. Uh, I think we're pretty much willing to take on just about you know anything yeah. that you want to try. Um, if you uh, want to work on your bush class lessons, um, you've probably seen some previous videos of trips that I've made out here with uh, Sticker and, uh, and Steen and, and a few others, uh, uh, XMP. Uh, so uh, yeah, just uh, want to let you know we're getting out here and getting her done. And uh, we're going to do a little more hiking here, and i got to show them a little bit more of my beautiful park. Uh, and uh, It's a nice drive, too, from Minneapolis. There you Very go. Very picturesque. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, uh, we're, worth the trip. We're willing to stay here uh, as long as you want to stay uh, to get in some time, even if it's a couple of hours and you're just coming, you know, 40 miles uh, from uh, Faribault. <laughs> that would be fine. We'd be willing to meet you here. So, okay, guys. Uh, we're going to get on with our trip here and uh, we'll give you a little bits and pieces of what we get accomplished here throughout the day. I think we're going to work on some more uh, uh, edible plants and some medicinal plants and tree ID and another bit of uh, navigation uh, practice and uh, I feel a bow drill fire in our in our future here I'm at some sure point. We'll yeah, I, you know, what's what's a trip without doing a <laughs> firecraft? Uh, so, all right. Take care guys and we'll talk to you in a little later. So you want me to cut a chunk for you too? No, I'm good. <laughs> that cuts nice. Yeah. That's that Fiskers? Yeah, this is the uh, second to smallest Fiskers. But for its weight, it's pretty good. Yeah, that looks like some good piece of basswood there. Hey guys, the show is going to uh, put together a stick that we can uh, do some direction finding with using the sun and the shadow stick method. So getting something carved up here that's uh, 
fairly straight. And uh, sometimes what I do is I'll carve a little bit more of a point at the top too. Oh, but. Yeah. Looks a little bit as an indicator. Anyway, we'll show you how we get into the ground here and uh, get it set up. Right here. And stick it in the ground, about as straight up and down as you can. Okay. Now we're going to see if we can find the shadow on the other end and put a stick in there. See how well. <laughs> kind of hard to see. Yeah. I'll show you a trick if you put your finger oh, I got on some the birch bark. top of the stick. Oh, I see it. Okay. You can actually find. I need a stick. It doesn't take much stick or a rock or any bit of an indicator. Kind of tease the top of the stick and you'll find out. There we go. Okay. So, he's got it set in there and now we'll give it a little bit of time and then we'll come back uh, in a few minutes and we'll see how far the shadow is swung. swung. <laughs> and uh, we'll have our direction east to west. Okay, one more time. Okay guys, Sho and I are doing some land navigation and he is sighting on a landmark which is across the valley here. Well, I got two, about 223. Okay. And that's way over there. It's a kind of a uh, historical marker uh, that is a old windmill. And uh, we know where that is on our map. And so he's got uh, 223 degrees. So we're going to look at our topo map now, and we're going to mark a line to the topo map uh, with uh, our dry erase marker here on our laminated map. Okay, guys, we're. I'm going to probably take that part. <laughs> sure. Okay, guys, uh, we've got our topo map here, and he's got his compass laid out. He's taken his 220 degree reading and uh, lined, it up with that lined it up with a little uh, uh, indicator that he has on the camp, on the uh, compass. And then uh, using the grease dry erase marker that we have along, we're drawing a line from uh, down here where we know that the uh, landmark is. And we don't really care uh, where it lands the other way. We know we're on. We're on this side of our river, someplace, but we're not certain quite where. So now we're going to take another reading to another building. Find those houses. Okay. We have some houses on the top of the map that we're taking a bearing on. So it looks like 180. That would be just about right. So we're going to so. translate that. And then from where the house is, okay, 180. You want to draw your line from there and have it intersect our first reading. And where were they? Right about there. Yeah, well, it's one of those little purple. Okay, one of these uh, just across the highway. Compass has 180. Yep, just about. Yeah, close enough. So right here, where the two lines cross, is about where our location is. And now we know. And so we are going to uh, move over a little further because we're looking for this bend in the river right here. And. Uh, now we know where we are, we are on the map. All right. Good job, Joe. <laughs> Triangulation and direction finding. It's definitely useful. You guys uh, that aren't here today, I hope you're getting jealous because uh, we're getting some good <laughs> stuff done.
kind of nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the first one I've seen this, this year. Let's see if I can get a still picture now. Anyway, guys, thought you might enjoy that. Okay, guys, we're back at our shadow stick here. The show was trying it out, and uh, so he's going to find the top of the shadow. Put his little indicator. All right. So where's the first one? Right here. Okay. And there's the second one. Now he's got some uh, some cordage that he cordage made up. I made earlier. <laughs> out of some metal. And he's going to just lay that in a straight line between the two sticks. And that, of course, should indicate uh, east to west. So which one is east and which one is west? Well, you're in the, the, the right hand side is east. This, and the left, as I'm facing it, the left hand side is east and right hand side is west. All right. But uh, yeah, if you face the stick, you're. Should I match it to the compass and yeah, see how accurate it is? Yeah, let's try it with the compass. So we're going to just see now how this. Uh, He's got his compass here, finding north, north and then east to west. Wow, that's pretty good. And look at that, guys. East to west. Amazing, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> neat. That works. So, give you a general direction. And uh, we know that uh, it's at least re reliable for a good share of the day. Yeah. Okay, another skill practiced. And I uh, guess we'll hit the trail here. Okay, guys, show is going to do a first time flint and steel fire. Yep, first time. First time. So we're going to see what can happen here. See if we can get a spark onto the charred cloth. Good. <laughs> right. You can try to find a good sharp edge and then keep yeah, backing away. There you go. It's kind of hard sometimes to get a spark to land on it. Almost. Oops. Plenty of sparks are just not hitting it. Yeah. Huh. I think it might be a little damp. Maybe. Let's try another piece. Sometimes there's just enough of a difference in them. Yeah. Maybe find another edge that feels a little sharper. It's very humid out here today, guys, so we're probably fighting a certain amount of humidity. Sharp enough edge. Think about right there. And they're landing on there for sure. Hmm. 
Yeah, I, I'm gonna try tearing it a little bit here. Like I said, I don't think I've ever tried it in humidity quite as high as this. Yeah, it's very, very wet out here. And you get a little on your fingers. It doesn't take a whole lot to There, there we go. go. Just to tear the fiber a little bit. Okay. Put that whole thing in there. Having fun, guys. We are going to cook us some food. Lay them on. Hedging our bets in this moisture. <laughs> Well, we'll get back to you guys. We're going to get our bed of coals here and get some food on and uh, go from there. But uh, there you have it, a little flint and steel and uh, getting the fire going. All right, Mike out. Fire after the rain. <laughs> How much of that smoke is steam and <laughs> how much is smoke? <laughs> Watch your sleeve there, bud. Yes, this is not fireproof t-shirt. <laughs> it's black because it's made of charred cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, it will melt to me if I burn it. It's polyester. Go ahead. Hey guys, Mike here. And uh show has been uh, uh, gracious enough to let me use his pocket sharpening kit here and I'm working at uh, putting an edge on my BK-14 and uh, using the steel as kind of a coarse and scrubbing back and forth and I gotta tell you he has an understanding of uh, the blade geometry and getting it getting things sharp because golly it's uh, made a real difference in what I've been able to accomplish here so the first thing he's trying to do is establish a burr on one edge, or that's where the metal kind of rolls over to the other edge, and you feel it as a bit of a hook on the opposite edge. And that just tells you that you've yeah. you've abraded those two planes of steel so that they're meeting and overlapping it a little bit. Yep. So before you do <laughs> that, you don't really know that you've established an edge, so that's grinding in your, your primary bevel here. Yeah. And then the other thing you mentioned is you know, focusing on the shoulder area here. Mm -hmm. I've probably tended to neglect that with the stones that I've used yep. because I've put the knife to the stone and then this, we're doing the stone, diamond rather, I should say, to the knife. And this is the, the way I find that these these smaller stones work best in the field is holding them sort of like a file and yeah. bracing, bracing your knife against your knee. And later on, I'll see, uh, he'll take a bit of a different approach to get, uh, maybe eliminate the burr because this this technique it it's very heavy grinding on one side so it creates a pretty significant burr on the other side so eventually won't want to get rid of that burr but uh, wow. we'll check back later in his progress yeah oh here it is <laughs> it's in my cooler <laughs> <laughs> okay guys well uh, chef show is <laughs> 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 putting together our kebabs for tonight now we got our fire uh, going over here, and uh, so that looks real good. Mixture of what? What do we got there? Got onions, Building it up. Uh, 
onions, yep. mushrooms, okay. uh, zucchini, oh, yeah. red peppers, and chicken breast. Excellent. And he confessed to me that he's never tried this before. No, I haven't. This is the first time. <laughs> but I don't see it's a problem. I, I've done these before, so. There's nothing to it. Yeah. This should work good. I'm looking forward to it. So, yes, he's he's doing the cooking. And it's uh, looking good. Looking good. Kebabs on the grill. I just want to show you guys this grill. Um, it's got uh, kind of a cross hatch on one side and then uh, another part of the grill on the, the other end. Uh, and uh, this was made for me by uh, Little John, a uh, member at Bushcraft USA. And uh, the reason I put the cross hatch on is because, uh, uh, different from other designs like this, I <laughs> had a fillet of chicken that went right through the bars one time and I fell into the fire and I decided I was going to find out a way to stop it from doing that. So he welded in some cross pieces, and so one half of the grill now has a, a little more mesh to it. But uh, yeah, this is working good. Quick and dirty, and the food is looking uh, pretty tasty. Okay, guys, well, kebabs are off, and uh, we got a little lemon to uh, squeeze on them here. And some lime. And some lime. A ledge of Edges were a little crispy, but uh, I think we're doing pretty good. And it is delish. It just came out just right. So, having fun, kicking back. Chef show. <laughs> He's gonna try. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. Good. Yep, excellent. Yeah, the burnt is actually not too bad. Yeah, well, you can't know, even taste it. That's right. We're made of carbon. <laughs> Those other ones will be done here pretty soon, I guess. <laughs> it is better than I expected. Yeah. Okay, guys, Mike here with... Uh, Show Enough. Show Enough, yes. <laughs> and uh, we've had a great day out here at the uh, state park. And we hiked about four and a half miles, almost five miles, I Seems suppose. Like longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put on a few miles. Um, and uh, we covered a lot of stuff, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did a bit of everything, really. Gosh, yeah. Orienteering at first, and then yep. the natural cordage. Education, cordage. Yep. Um, uh, sun compass, some more orienteering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I'm lacking in, so I'm glad we're doing it. Because, yeah. Uh, and uh, showed showed me uh, the knife sharpening uh, process, and I got it to where it's shaving hairs off my arm, and it's going to take a little bit more touch up, but I'm just glad to learn. Uh, from this guy, uh, he's got a good handle on knife sharpening. Very impressive. Um, I, I certainly respect his abilities for that. Um, had a good meal. Yeah, that, that was awesome. The kebabs, that were fantastic. Uh, wish you guys could uh, come out and enjoy it. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to make that a regular occurrence. Yeah, because yeah. it's easy and it's yeah. good. So, uh, yeah, just to put in a plug for uh, our, both our our groups uh, getting together regularly uh, down here in southern Minnesota at the Minneapolis State Park uh, uh, most Saturdays uh, at 9 o'clock and uh, up in the yeah up in uh, Highland Lake Park Reserve in Edina uh, yep. every other Sunday and I think I'm just going to do the morning 9 a.m. or sorry 10 a.m. Yeah. and again if people want rides to either of those yeah. from Minneapolis I'd be happy to give you a ride. So yeah, yeah. Just let me know. I'm trying to get something started and uh, I think we're getting together a pretty good core of uh, Minnesota bushcrafters and uh, there's no reason we shouldn't have yeah. some excitement about that. Minnesota is a wilderness state. We've got a lot of good resources and a lot to learn and uh, great bunch of guys with a bunch of skills that are willing to pass on the knowledge and uh, yeah it's kind of exciting so we've had a fantastic day thank yeah. you brother for thank coming you. on down for yeah. It. yeah you're welcome wish we could have had more of you guys uh, but uh, we'll look forward to next time yeah and uh, definitely keep things rolling so all right uh, with that I guess we're gonna say our goodbyes to you guys and uh, see you on the on the net on the forum and uh, got any questions you can get a hold of either one of us in the Minnesota section fairly easily. We kind of monitor that stuff all the time. And uh, yeah, 
Hope you guys get out and get some dirt time. <laughs> Got our knees dirty today and uh, everything. everything dirty. It's all about the dirt time and having fun. All right, guys. Take care. Catch you next time.